So now we're ready to solve all the more complicated ones when we're solving for exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent. For all the toughest ones, here's what I recommend you do. Step one, you draw it. You give yourself a reference angle. What I mean by that is that you look at on the unit circle where it sits. What if it sits here, your angle that you're looking at? Well, then you draw a reference angle. I would say that whatever it is from the x-axis. So maybe it was here. Or I don't know, maybe it was something that finished down here. Then I would draw my reference angle there. I would use that reference angle and convert that to degrees if I need to, and then use special triangles. Now, what are the special triangles again? Hopefully you remember those. Um, we did those before. There's another set of videos where I showed you those. So here are your two special triangles. The one that's 45, 45, 90. It goes 1, 1, root 2. And the other one is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So that one, I didn't draw it. It doesn't look like the same uh, angle here, but it's supposed to be 60. This is supposed to be 30. This goes 1, 2, root 3. Those are the ones you need to know. Because this will help you to know what to do. This will be like either the answer is like 1 over root 2, or I don't know, 2 over root 3, or root 3 over 2, or whatever. Um, well, actually, 2 over root 3 isn't possible. But you just use sine, cosine, or tangent. Use your Soka Toa tricks, or whatever you use, in order to know what to do here. And then I check for quadrants. And what I mean by that is that I check what quadrant is it in. Is it in this, or this, or this, or this? Remember, if it, if it's in this quadrant, sine, cosine, and tangent are positive. If it's over here, only sine is positive. The other ones are negative. If it's here, only tangent is positive. If it's over here, only cosine is positive. I use those to put it together, and away I go. So let's try to put it all in context now. Let's put it all together. So first draw it, then do special triangles, then look at quadrants. So let's calculate the exact value of cos of minus pi over 2. I'm going to start off just nice and easy just to sort of show, okay, let's, let's see just how to do this. Step one, we go back here, we want to draw it. All right, let's draw an angle of minus pi over 2 first. Let's just draw this. So if we draw, this is, remember, this is 0, this is 2 pi, and this right here is pi. If you know your radians, that's how this goes. Well, if I want minus pi over 2, minus means going downwards instead of upwards. And pi over 2 is halfway between here and here, so it must be here. So here's where my angle finishes. My angle is actually here. Well, this is almost too easy because this is one of these really easy ones here. So this is super easy because it's a multiple of pi over 2. Those are the easy ones. I started on purpose with really easy. So if we look at this then, let's see. Um, cos asks for the x value. Do you remember that? That cos, cos of theta is the x value and sine of theta is the y. So in this case, you can just simply do it by this. Just look at the x value. The x value is 0 here, isn't it? I mean, the y value is negative 1, but the x value is 0. So if that's the case, then I would say then that, oh, that means this answer here is 0. There's our answer. That was easy. Let's do more difficult ones now. Let's do something like calculate the exact value of sine of pi over 4. Now we've got to draw our angle of pi over 4. So let's see, this is 0 and 2 pi. This is pi. And I want pi over 4. In order to figure out pi over 4, I've got to look at, well, this is all of pi. That means halfway must be this. This is pi over 2. So that's halfway between you know, here and here. And if this is pi over 2, I want pi over 4, which is half of that. So that means I go right here. There is what I'm looking at. So I draw my angle, and I usually do what I like to do is say reference. So my reference angle is pi over 4. Now, I need to know how many degrees that is. It turns out this really helps. So my reference angle, ref, and this is a little symbol for angle, is pi over 4. Do you know how many degrees that is? Look at this. This is 45 degrees. So I'm going to say then that theta is 45 degrees. Now, why do I use that? Let's go back to our steps here. Because step 1 was to draw it, and step 2 was to use special triangles. So I know that my angle is 45. In other words, instead of pi over 4, I can say that's 45. Can I take the sine of 45? Well, I can get out my trusty special triangle, the one that uses 45. So that's why I'm going to use my special triangles here. I'm on step two now. So maybe I'll write this down. Maybe I'll actually say this was step one. Step two now is a special triangle. So I'm going to use a special triangle of 45, 45, 90, which goes like this. Oops, that's supposed to be a four. I don't know what happened there. 45. 45, 90. And this goes 1, 1, root 2. So if I want the sine of 45 degrees, that's going to be equal to, let's see, sine. Let's say I do this one. This is my angle here. So sine is opposite 
over hypotenuse, right? So katoa. So this is opposite of our hypotenuse. So it's one over root two. So I almost have the answer. What I just have to do now is just double check with quadrants. Check where it is. In other words, you got to just look at quadrants. So let's look at this here. Let's see. Over here, this predicts then that this should be in this quadrant. Uh, let's see, C A S T. So this is in the quadrant where it should be positive. Did I get a positive answer? Yes. Therefore, this is the answer. I'm done. So it's just a matter of double checking. So you say, finally, your answer then is this, so sine of pi over 4. It's nice to put it back in the terms they gave you. It's going to be 1 over square root of 2. There's your answer. This is the exact value without a calculator. See, you didn't need a calculator for this. Let's do another one. Let's find the exact value for sine of pi over 6. Now remember, we draw this again. So step 1 is always to draw it. So if this is 0 and 2 pi, this is pi. I can split it up into, now this seems a little bit more complicated, but this is the pi over 3s. Do you remember these? We had pi over 3, this is 2 pi over 3. Okay, this is a third of pi. And I know that pi over 6 is half of that, so that means this is, this is pi over 6 here. This right here is pi over 6. So I know that this right here is my angle, so I can say my reference angle is pi over 6. I always do my reference angle from the x-axis. So it's pi over 6. How many degrees is that? Now you could actually convert it. You can just say, fine, let's convert that. This is pi over 6 radians. I want to convert that. And to convert it, I've got to know how many radians are in a certain amount of degrees. And I want to put radians on the bottom. So I'm going to say pi radians over 180 degrees. That's the conversion factor, that there's pi radians in 180 degrees. You know that from here. If I go all the way around, or halfway around, then that is pi radians, and that's 180 degrees. So I do this, my rads cancel out, my pi's cancel out, and I have 180 over 6. And 180 divided by 6 is 30 degrees. So that actually works nicely. So I have now my reference angle is actually 30 degrees. You can also see it as this. It take your whole pi right here and divide it. That's 180 degrees. Divide it by 3. That gives you 60. And then take half of that as 30. That's another way to do it. Either way, we have a reference angle of 30 degrees. Why do we use that? Because now we use special triangles. Do we have a special triangle that has 30 degrees in it? We sure do. We have our 30, 60, 90 one. So let me just draw it that way. So I'm going to draw the 60 here, the 30 here, and it goes 1, 2, root 3. This is 90. So if that's the case, then I want, I want sine of 30 degrees. That's what I want here. I want to take the sine of 30 degrees. So sine of 30, soka toa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's just going to be 1 over 2. Now I may have the answer. We just got to check quadrants and make sure that we're in the right place. This is always a good idea. And it seems silly right now to check for quadrants, but later on it's going to become really important because you're going to have really sneaky answers because of the quadrants. So if we look at this, let's go back to the quadrants here. Where are we sitting? We're sitting in, let's see, this is A, S, T, C. So our, our angle is right here. This is where we're sitting. This is in this quadrant, which has an A, which means all of them are positive. Is my answer positive? Yes. Therefore, I have my answer. My answer is that the sine of pi over 6 equals 1 over 2. It's always nice to convert it back. And instead of saying 30 degrees, convert it back to what they originally gave you. Then it looks a lot nicer. See how I did that? Now let's do another one. Calculate the exact value of sine of 5 pi over 3 this time. So again, step 1, draw it. So I'm going to draw this. So this right here is 0 and 2 pi. This is pi. I want to count in pi over 3. So remember to do those. I go here and I go here. This is 1 pi over 3. This is 2 pi over 3. This is 3 pi over 3. This down here is 4. And this is 5 pi over 3. Over here is 4 pi over 3. And this is 6 pi over 3. Now it's not halfway. I'm trying not to draw it looking like 45. It shouldn't be 45. It should actually be 60 degrees. So if I look at this then, my actual angle, my 5 pi over 3, that means I finish here, don't I? I finish right here on this wheel. I finish right here. What I'm going to do now is take this reference angle right here. I'm going to say that my reference angle, this is really important, watch this. My reference angle is not 5 pi over 3, it's just, it's just this little piece right here is just 1 pi over 3. So this is, this is a pi over 3. So I just want, this is pi over 3 is the important thing here. Now I know I had 5 of them, but it's still, the angle from the x-axis is still just pi over 3. 
If you look at this, we're at 5 pi over 3. We've got to go 1 more pi over 3 to get to here. So my reference angle is actually pi over 3 in this case. And how many degrees is that? Pi over 3, that's 1 third of 180 degrees. That's 60 degrees. So I can say my reference angle 60 degrees. That was a little bit tougher part. You had to get a reference angle. You had to first finish, or look where you finish. But the key is if it was a 5 pi over 3, your reference angle is going to be something over 3. So that should hopefully help. But it really helps to draw it, so you'll be able to figure that out later. So, step two, now we use special triangles. I've got to do something with 60 degrees. Do I have a special triangle that's with 60 degrees? I sure do. I have my 30, 60, 90 one. So if you remember that one, we have 60 here, we have 30 here. This is 90. It goes 1, 2, root 3. So if that's the case, then I want sine of 60. See, that? that's what I want? I want sine of 60 degrees. So sine of 60, this is my angle here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, it's root 3 over 2. Okay, this is my reference angle. Now you got to think, this is the important part. Now we look at quadrants. The quadrants that we're in, we're, let's see, this goes A, S, T, C. We are in a quadrant where only cosine is positive. Do you see that? that? This is C. C means only cosine is positive. Did we do a cosine? Nope, we did a sine. So because of that, that tells me then that my answer is actually, so sine of 5 pi over 3 is going to be negative root 3 over 2. How did I get it was negative? That was from the quadrant. That came because we're down here. Now that is a way of doing this. Another way to have actually done this one would have been to look at it in more detail to actually draw it. So if I actually, if I drew this little piece right here, I could say that this is my x and y, and I could say this thing goes out this way like this. This right here is 60 degrees. And I would know then that this one right here, if you really label the things properly here, um, across the 60, this is gonna be a one, this is a two, because that's the hypotenuse, and this is root three. And actually, you can do it this way, but just be very careful which ones are negative. This one goes to the right, so it's positive. The radius is always positive, but this one goes down, so that would be a negative. If you did it that way, then sine would be negative this over this, so you get it directly. So if you draw it carefully, you don't actually have to worry about the quadrant business. You know, if you just draw it and then change your diagram here to fit sort of where it sits, then you actually don't even have to worry about quadrants. So there's a couple ways of doing it, but this is just how I like to do it. I just like to do it and then just figure out the quadrant and throw a negative or a positive on it. Last question. Calculate the exact value for cos of 3 pi over 4. Let's deal with that. Uh, so if we do this one, we can actually figure it out as well. So we can do, um, let's see here. First of all, we've got to draw this. We're going to draw 3 pi over 4. So again, we have 0 and we have 2 pi. And what are we going to do now? We're going to have, um, what, right here we're going to have pi. And then what we're going to do now is actually take a look at this and try to draw it. So let's, let's try to do this one. We have 3 pi over 4. Now this, we have to think about um, from here to here, this is pi. So halfway to there, that's pi over 2. And half of that is pi over 4. So i got to start counting by pi over 4, and i got to do three of them. So this is 1 pi over 4. 2 pi over 4, so this must be 3 pi over 4. So here's where I'm sitting. I'm sitting right here. This is where I'm sitting. That's where I am. Because of that, I have a reference angle of pi over 4. What's that in degrees? Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So my reference angle equals 45 degrees. And then I use my special triangles. I have a special triangle that has 45, doesn't it? Uh, don't I? So I use that one. So I use the one that goes 45, 45, 90. 45 and 90. Goes 1, 1, root 2. And if I do this, then I can actually figure it out. Okay, I want the cosine of this, right? I want cos of this. So cos of 45 degrees. Cosine of 45. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, because that's ka, so ka toa. So adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2. And then i got to think about quadrants. For my quadrants, which quadrant am I in? Let's see. I'm at C, A, S, T. So the, I'm in this quadrant over here. And that's a quadrant where only sine is positive. Am I doing sine? Nope, I'm doing cos. Therefore, I could say that my answer is cos of 3 pi over 4 
is not going to be positive of this. It's going to be negative 1 over root 2. That's how I deal with that one. And finally, we can do a last one even. Um, I said it was going to be a last one, but actually let's do another one. Let's do um, tan of 210 degrees. Let's just do that one instead, actually. That'll be a good one, because I promised you we'd do some tangents, so maybe we'll do that one. First of all, this is in degrees, and that's actually okay. We can just do the whole thing in degrees if we want. So let's just draw our, um, let's do like we do before here. Let's just draw ourselves a unit circle. We'll draw a unit circle, x and y. But this time we're going to do it in degrees. So in degrees we have 0 here and we have 360 degrees. And over here we have 180 degrees. Now if I want 210, see that's past this, but it's not quite at 270 degrees. This is 90. So it's not quite up, uh, it's past 90, it's past 180, but it's less than 270. So it's actually sitting somewhere over here. Now what's this value here? What is it? Well, 210 is 30 past 80. I don't know if that makes any sense. If we actually finish here, this is your 210 degrees. So I can say my reference angle, we always define the reference angle as here, this little piece here, is 30 degrees past 180, isn't it? So that's why this right here is 30 degrees. And now I can again, as usual, that was, that was step one. So step two now, I'm going to use my special triangles. And since I'm looking at 30 degrees, I know to use the 30, 60, 90 one. So this is 60, this is 30 degrees, this is 90. This goes 1, 2, root 3. So then what I would say is, all right, uh, this one right here, um, I want the tangent of this. Tangent of 30, this is what I want, right? I want tan tan of 30. Whoops, I, we've been doing those in red before. I may as well be consistent, or try to be at least. So I have tan of 30. What's that going to be? Tan is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, it's going to be 1 over root 3. That's what we're looking at. Now we've got to check, though, is this correct? What quadrant are we in? Let's see, C-A-S-T. I'm in a quadrant where there's a T here. T means only tangent is positive. Was I doing a tangent? Yes, I was. Therefore, I could say my total answer then is tangent of 210. It's always nice to wrap it all up. It's equal to 1 over root 3. That's our answer. So to see how we can solve these really complicated ones with a fairly straightforward method. So even these really, really tough ones, these are ones that you know, on tests give students really a tough time. But I mean, this is how you can deal with them. Isn't that awesome?